cầu chúc. Good afternoon. Uh, it's uh, the uh, time to start our meeting. I call the meeting to order. Today we have five items. Before the meeting, we have received uh, this paper, ECI 2018-192, from the administration. The paper sets out the changes to the uh, establishment of directorate uh, officers since 2002, as well as the implications to the uh, establishment of uh, directorate officers arising from the five discussion items today. I may remind my members that if you have had direct or indirect peculiar interest in respect of the items today, please disclose the nature of your interest before you speak in accordance with uh, Rule 83.8 of the Rules of Procedure. I also would like to remind members about the uh, requirements uh, uh, on uh, voting when you have direct procuring interest in accordance with uh, Rule 84. First item is uh, EC 2017-1824, the Government Secretariat, the Transport and Housing Bureau Transport Branch. The proposal is to the, create a three supernumerary direct posts in the Airport uh, Expansion Project Coordination Office, Transport Branch and Transport and Housing Bureau for about seven years up to the 31st of um, March 2025, involving one principal government engineer, one administrative officer, Stop Gracie, and one chief um, engineer for the purpose of coordinating the uh, three runway system project. Uh, we started our discussion on the 15th of May, and uh, we have already introduced uh, the officers uh, in attendance uh, previously, so I won't repeat uh, their names now. Uh, uh, Mr. Chu Hoi Dick, first round, to be followed by Mr. Ma Tian Liao. Mr. Chu. When we discuss the uh, free RS project, he said that there will be uh, the issuance of uh, corporate bonds, uh, which uh, may be uh, uh, bought by the public. There was such an announcement back then, and it's also uh, mentioned uh, in the 2035 um, framework for our airport. And there are certain things that were projected to happen in 2018. So I would like to know that uh, the uh, taking out of a loan for the free RS project and the announcement of this uh, decision, vis-à-vis uh, -vis the announcement of the 2035 uh, airport uh, development framework, uh, which come which came first. And uh, what's the relationship uh, between the two uh, as uh, envisaged by the AA? Let me uh, talk about the 2035 uh, uh, framework, and I would uh, leave the question of financing to Mr. Lau. As we uh, sell out in the paper provided to members of the subcommittee, uh, the AA, Airport Authority, Hong Kong. Uh, we make an announcement this year after the planning has been decided on. Uh, we are mo working towards this particular uh, time schedule. To, and as for fin uh, financing, I'll defer to Mr. Lau. In 2016, AA uh, commissioned HSBC to be a financial consultant to look at the financial arrangements. There are three parts to the financing uh, scheme, the short-term financing, medium-term financing. In the first half of uh, 2018 uh, financial year, we are doing the preparation, which is, which is now. And in the next half, the, the latter half of 2018-2019, or the first half of 2019 uh, financial year, that is to say, uh, towards this, the end of this year, or earlier this year, early next year, we're going to uh, take some measures to raise short-term funds. And then uh, there will be the medium term. Short-term financing would include uh, the uh, retail bond referred to by Mr. Chu uh, is uh, $5 billion for um, 
of three years. It's estimated uh, that uh, early next year the bonds will be offered to the public. Uh, that's uh, the current situation with the financial financing plan uh, of AA. The two uh, have two gentlemen have answered my questions, and I was asking a, also asking a question about the uh, relationship between the two plans uh, in terms of timetable. So, is it that the government would announce the uh, plan for 2035? Before the AA announced the plan for uh, loans or bonds, Chairman, I think uh, on the part of the AA, uh, the two things are not uh, necessarily linked. Uh, we were talking about the financing arrangement that is in relation to the free RS pro project. This is going to go ahead. It is uh, needed. We have to do it. For the 2035 uh, planning, we are talking about the further development of the airport uh, beyond uh, in by 2035 and beyond. So basically, we are talking about two different plans. Yes, basically they are different, but there is one com com common point, and that is that we are going to spend more money for the plan for 2035. I think that this council and the public would expect that there will be new development initiatives. And then the next question is how much would they cost us? And how do you go about the financing? And if you approach this council for funding uh, approval, and I, don't, I know that you have uh, uh, distributed uh, a lot of uh, dividends. So perhaps uh, in, uh, instead of uh, seeking this council's uh, funding approval, you have to issue more bonds. Uh, Mr. Chu, we are not here to discuss the finance, the financing of the by the AA. We're talking about the creation of some the senior government posts. So your questions are are, are really not uh, re relevant here. Well, the, when these posts are created, the, the first thing they have to do is the 2035. Development plan and the free RS uh, project. That's what they are required to do, Mr. Martin Leo. These posts were created in 2012 uh, 20, uh, to 2015, and then it was extended to uh, end of March 2018. And the proposal is to retain the supernumerary post for seven years. I think it's uh, more appropriate to extend it uh, for seven years instead of asking you to come back after three years. Uh, the VRS project is uh, complicated. Uh, so are these uh, three uh, directorate posts uh, sufficient? Because they have to be responsible for uh, a lot of procedures such as uh, the design of the uh, Runway system and also a lot of uh, applications uh, pertaining to the uh, planning process. Can 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 you tell us the number of uh, applications, zoning applications uh, submitted so far, and can you uh, f somehow to expedite the uh, process? Permanent Secretary, thank you, Mr. Ma Mr. Liao, for your questions. Uh, on the manpower. We need to strike a balance. We need sufficient manpower on the one hand, and on the other, we have to be mindful about uh, spending public funds uh, wisely. In August 2016, uh, the 3RS project was formally launched, and from the experience so, f so far since the announcement, we think that. Uh, these uh, three uh, supernumerary directorate posts will be uh, good enough to provide the support. But as the uh, project progresses uh, and, and at some appropriate uh, time, we may need to carry out a review. But I would say uh, they will be sufficient uh, th at this point. I will defer to Mr. Ng. On uh, the various uh, application processes, uh, 
There are thirty thousand plans which have to be uh, reviewed according to AA uh, through our consultant. Uh, we would um, do some preliminary vetting of the plans to be submitted to the buildings department so as to reduce um, the uh, workload of the buildings department. The third question. And on how to expedite the uh, processing and vetting of uh, 30,000 plans, as Mr. Sutton has uh, explained. Basically, this is the responsibility of the team working for the AA on the part of uh, our uh, coordination office. We will uh, have a cons engage a consultant for quality control to ensure that uh, when the plans are submitted to the buildings department or other government departments, they will be up to us. They will be able to meet certain uh, requirements, so that it, the internal assessment and vetting of these plans by the government uh, will be fast. So as so that uh, we can reduce the possibility of having to uh, return the plans to the AA for uh, uh, amendment or improvement, Mr. Wu Chiwai, First round. Having heard the replies, I'm a little bit um, perplexed. The AA has the duty to present all the plans arising from the 3RS project. But with this uh, coordination office, uh, according to the uh, government, uh, there are ways that you can uh, ensure that the plan submitter will be uh, accurate and that uh, the uh, processing and uh, vetting by the uh, planning, planning, buildings department and other departments uh, will be done uh, uh, more uh, smoothly. Can, can you tell us uh, what's the difference between this having this uh, coordination office and uh, the situation where we don't have one? Shouldn't uh, the uh, team under the AA be responsible to ensure that the plans uh, submitted to the relevant authority w w would uh, be uh, processed uh, in as in uh, as smooth as a manner as uh, possible? This has to do with the uh, uh, thinking. Behind setting up the cooperate coordination office, I, I was just asking about uh, the, what's the crucial difference of having one. On different occasions, we have explained to members the coordination office uh, plays a number of roles. It's a monitor. It also uh, provides support. It's also the coordinator. They they have uh, many a few a number of roles to assume. So, uh, Mr. Wu, what you are saying is basically correct, and that is the team working for the AA, uh, the consultants, their personnel, to have the fundamental principle to deal with uh, all aspects of the project and make sure that they are okay, because this is an AA project, but this is a mammoth task, and a lot of public interest is at stake. It's a matter of uh, significant uh, concern to the public. So people also respect the government to do something, and that is the government is not going to be a bystander. So while we monitor the progress, we will be able to provide some uh, independent input to the AA, and we'll be able to coordinate uh, the necessary support. 固然，佢哋誒機管局本身嘅團隊係有責任，要確保。Since uh, the AA's team has to ensure that the plans are properly prepared uh, up to uh, and will meet a certain quality uh, criteria, our, our colleagues in the office, you you may say that also play an independent role to uh, do some um, quality uh, additional uh, layer of quality control. So uh, when we say we will monitor the progress 
and also provide necessary assistance. So this will be part of the uh, job of the office. There's a, a core a road uh, that, that they would play. Uh, I just want to know more about the uh, QC part. Originally, the division of labor is uh, very clear. The AA team has to uh, submit uh, quality plans to the buildings department and other authorities for approval. So that's already a check and balance system. And now, in between the two, you have an uh, you have inserted a uh, coordination office, uh, which uh, plays an uh, independent uh, quality uh, checkers role. So it would mean that the blurring of the uh, division, because through the assistance of your colleagues in the coordination office, the plans are submitted. And if there's something amiss, so who should bear the responsibility f for the um, rejected plans? Your AA or your colleagues in the coordination office? Well, the, the question of responsibility is uh, very clearly delineated. The authority to approve uh, building plans is uh, the building's de department. It's an independent uh, road, a statutory uh, power that uh, the department enjoys. And uh, the ultimate uh, responsibility of uh, submitting plans for approval is the AA. So I just want to know the difference uh, when we have the coordination office, which I cannot really imagine. The plans have to um, come comply with uh, the relevant uh, standards and criteria uh, set by the buildings department and other statutory authorities so what is what 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 cannot be done uh, that the aa cannot done that, that, and, and and we will require the uh, assistance of this uh, coordination office hi well i think having another independent team using a different set of eyes will always be an extra layer of protection because there might be some blind spots between different professional groups. So having a fresh set of eyes, uh, us being the third party, providing independent opinion for the AA is valuable. And ultimately, we would like to have the whole process uh, more uh, smoother. Oh, next we have Mr. Holden Chow. Thank you. I would like to take the opportunity. Uh, the paper is very clear. The AEPCO will coordinate with other departments uh, to do the uh, to handle the future arrangements. So regarding the third runway, uh, in the past I've always said that. We had given a lot of suggestions uh, connecting Tongchong and the airport traffic. We had put forward concrete suggestions, including so given there's more th passenger throughput, could we have a light rail to Tongchong? And you could also connect to the uh, Guangzhou, Zhuhai, Macau Bridge, and whether they are tourists or having local employees, people living in Dongchong, they can work in the airport, the third runway, then ultimately we would need these mass transit systems. So the government knows that in the past and now, if we have to take transport, even if you live in Dongchong, it's a circuitous route. So for residents in Dongchong who wish to work in the airport, the uh, time would be uh, longer than people living in other, uh, in, out, um, in other districts. So I'd like to take this opportunity. Since you do need to coordinate with other departments, 
so you might have to liaise with the Transport uh, Housing Bureau. Have you looked into the possibility of a light rail? So if you, even if you don't have a light rail, we had urged the MTRCL extending Dongchong to one more stop to the airport. Uh, Dongchong and Airport Express are using the same track. So if you can connect another stop, then people can take the mass transit. So have you looked into that? Have you liaised with transport housing to deal with this? And can you really allow Dongchong residents who they want to work in Dongchong, you want to create job opportunities, you need to give them a convenient public transport. I'd like to hear uh, your response. Thank you for the question regarding Mr. Chow's views. We had heard similar suggestions in other forum. The government will conduct a thorough and comprehensive transport review regarding Northern Langtao. Of course, there are a lot of considerations, including whether we need a rail network. If we were to rely on rail, should it be the Dongchong Line, or the Airport Express uh, track, uh, or should we have other arrangements? We need to consider the Dongchong uh, link and the Airport Express track. They are a shared track. So if we want to ensure uh, airport traffic is smooth, uh, how much ex excess capacity do we have? And the excess capacity would be uh, limited by the Qingma um, capacity. So if we use rail, should we use the existing track to develop on that? Uh, uh, should we build uh, new lines on that? Or should we have a, a, a brand new line? So we need to consider the whole of the Northern Langtao development. Uh, we will uh, look into this seriously. Mr. Chow, uh, of course, uh, I heard uh, it seems that your response uh, it, it allows you. Uh, you are indicating that you are. Um, you want to maintain an open attitude. And I'll, by 2022, the third runway will be complete, and by 2024, we'll have three runways. And it's already 2018 now. Do you have a target date uh, for your study? Okay, do you have a simple response? The study will have to uh, align with the large infrastructure completion date. Okay, then it's my turn. I just want to follow up on Mr. Wuji Wai's question. So when you create these uh, directed posts, you want to monitor the airport authority, uh, quality control, uh, and so on and you're asking for a seven year period you're also creating a post of an engineer so our government is uh, focused on IT we have uh, the use of AI so given seven years time will you consider deploying artificial intelligence and not just uh, humans will you promote uh, AI as well well chairman of course we have an open attitude towards high-tech. If there is good technology that can ex accelerate uh, the, the review of drafts, uh, engineering diagrams, of course we're willing to look into it. Uh, I'll defer to my colleague for further elaboration. Well, regarding reviewing drafts and documents, we have to rely on experienced personnel it's not a mechanical uh, issue. They have to be familiar with the building's ordinance. Uh, but of course, uh, we can work with the consultants to see uh, whether we can automate the process. But currently, we do have to rely on humans. 
but seven years, a uh, lot can happen. Uh, technology is developing rapidly. <clears throat> As I said, Chairman, we have an open attitude, and I will present Chairman's views, and we'll see where we can apply more technology. Mr. Leung Yu Jong. Thank you, Chairman. We have uh, a document on industrial safety and the AA and there have been more than a hundred thousand workers who undertook training and uh, you uh, expect uh, in the future project uh, in the last 12 months you have 1,000 uh, workers and there's a accident rate of less than three so compared to the Labor Department average uh, uh, 23.4 it's much lower so that is good news uh, I see that the, the uh, casualty figures are very uh, encouraging and in page two you say that uh, for any follow-up programs the contractor will have to respond immediately so respond immediately if the contractor <coughs> is not willing to cooperate or if the results are not uh, satisfactory then what <coughs> Mr. Wu regarding safety checks uh, if there are remedial works the engineer will require the contractor to do, to do it immediately if the contractor does not uh, cooperate in the monthly audit report it will be reflected and the AA uh, can deplete, uh, deploy its own contractor to do the remedial works so the contract, if the contractor uh, doesn't do it, the, the AA will do it and there will be penalties uh, if the contractor is not cooperative there will be some penalties uh, if we have to uh, consider uh, worker safety, we will have to take immediate action. Uh, can you disclose what the penalties are? Uh, the details of the penalties, we have to ask uh, the AA and have to uh, consult uh, the contractor manual and provide that after the meeting. Uh, in paragraph 3, it says that uh, there's a safety plan that allows the workers uh, that, uh, and it also has a uh, worker welfare benefits uh, they can uh, provide feedback so the worker benefits so what do you mean by that? who can answer mr. Mm? regarding worker benefits uh, we have a platform where they can provide feedback for the AA uh, such as uh, more canteens and other facilities on the site. Uh, details, I, I don't have the actual details. Uh, if you're interested, uh, we might have to ask the AA to provide that after the meeting. Well, I think uh, the workers are most concerned about uh, working hours. Uh, it's related to work safety. And the second issue is remuneration, whether it's a reasonable pay. And third, uh, uh, do we have overtime payment and such? Uh, uh, are you just talking about welfare or welfare facilities? Uh, I'm not sure if we have uh, foreign workers. Uh, can they provide feedback? Could you provide this information after the meeting? <clears throat> we can do so after the meeting. Thank you, Chairman. Mr. Wu Jiwai, I have two areas to follow up regarding AEPCO. Uh, it uh, has an independent consultant role, but uh, regarding the third runway, the AA, they have uh, an assistant for monitoring <coughs> and cooperation. Could you clarify this monitoring and consultant, how is it different from the consultant's role? And there's one area I don't understand. I think uh, the 
AA, the engineer consultant or its whole consultant team, they uh, must be some uh, elite professionals. So I can't, I cannot imagine why, with your QC assurance, how how can you uh, improve uh, the drafting, uh, the review of the drafting process? Does it mean that for these large infrastructure programs? Uh, that uh, this arrangement has to be maintained when we have large civil engineering projects we need an independent uh, coordinating office <coughs> to help the contractors to uh, submit their engineering drafts to the buildings department should we have a coordinated process <coughs> to smoothen out the process and rather than just uh, limited to the AEPCO uh, and the third runway system and uh, in your three posts some are administrative office officers and uh, they have a coordinating uh, intra-departmental liaison work so how are they going to liaison? You say uh, that uh, the observatory has to add radars and the fire services department has to install facilities but recently there was a paper the departments when they request these facilities they submit it uh, independently so can you explain what Uh, work requires that uh, coordination uh, and cooperation. Thank you, Mr. Wu, for your two questions, for your two groups of questions. First of all, the uh, VNM, the Vetting and Monitoring Consultant, that is our consultant it is not uh, the AAs these consultants as the name implies they vet and monitor the different works of the AA in different periods it is not just limited to uh, drawings and drafts whether it's uh, compliant uh, the majority of their time will be spent on ensuring the design is it cost effective is it uh, value for money uh, can we is there room for saving money I'll give you an example regarding the uh, uh, automated uh, passenger transit system we have suggested that on one hand it, we won't reduce functionality and we can save money so ultimately because of that suggestion we were able to save 800 million so it is not that uh, they were being lavish. So different professionals, when they look at uh, an issue, they can have different perspectives. And after the discussion, we can come up with a better solution at a lower price. So that is one uh, area of their work. Now, the AO grade C, the majority of the work will be coordinating the government internal work, as Mr. Wu said yesterday when we got to our, when our suggestion at the Economic Services Panel. Uh, um, Mr. Lau's team has to take up this role. But if they were here, if that uh, colleague was present, then he would have to ensure that all the internal processes, all the resources, uh, the deployment, 
the arrangements have been assembled and the different yesterday we were talking about the, the control tower, the observatory and our fire services <coughs> so they need to uh, speak to each other and they need to meet the deadlines of 2022 and 2024 so the coordinating work is important because ultimately we have so many government facilities that need to be uh, uh, aligned we cannot rely on independent bureaus so in the future how many more of these facilities will you have <clears throat> can you respond briefly well yesterday our colleagues mentioned there should be a second batch. Yesterday was the first batch and <clears throat> we have a second batch. Next, Mr. Tan Ti Chun. Thank you, Chairman. I recall the AEPCO had uh, been uh, vetoed in our uh, yes. establishment uh, subcommittee. So at the time, the government uh, said that uh, the AA will deal with uh, claims from the contractors and it does not involve uh, public expenditure. But in uh, Appendix 6, in the description, Paragraph 4, I see that uh, we need uh, to uh, <coughs> look at... Uh, the uh, building plans, the uh, contractual arrangements, and how to avoid claims and uh, arbitration. So, this AO won't be looking at all the claims uh, applications, but uh, when they will wish to avoid, uh, when they work on avoiding claims, I would like the government to explain that in greater detail. The AA uh, does not have to pay dividend, so the government is losing out in hundreds of <coughs> millions, and now we need uh, to have a person avoid claims. So is that uh, their responsibility or the government's responsibility uh, regarding claims? would like to ask the question. Uh, Chairman, I'll try to answer the question. Thank you, Mr. Chen, for your question. Regarding claims, in the end, it will be the responsibility of the AA. If there is a claim, of course, uh, the person to uh, uh, the, the, um, uh, the claim will be lodged against the, the AA, and the AA will need to, need to deal with it. But basically, we're talking about a mega project here for the government and for the whole society. Of course, we would like to minimize the possibility of such claims because eventually the AA is 100% owned by the government. As to how we can pr avoid claims, I think what we are saying here, uh, actually there are two aspects uh, to what we are saying here. First of all, how do you, what do you put in the contract, in your tender documents, in the contract, how can we try our best to eliminate, you know, <coughs> uh, terms which are vague and ambiguous. And also for the sequencing of the works in the project, uh, we need to do a better job. So that uh, what you do downstream can, <coughs> you know, <coughs> actually fit in with uh, what you do upstream. So the drafting of contract, if it were done properly, it can help minimize the possibility of claims. As we said, of course, such work is the responsibility of the AA, and the AA has also tried its best <coughs> in doing that. But if there is a third party, a vetting and monitoring consultant to help, and, and also and to provide professional input, it can certainly further help reduce the possibility of claims. So, if it has to do with the drafting of contracts, so it should be the AA which drafts the contracts. 
So for the proposed post, you're saying that you just want a third party to help. But if the contracts were not drafted clearly and if claims arise, does does it mean that this person will bear a bigger responsibility than the AA? Actually, the drafting of the contract is done by the AA. It is the AA's responsibility. It is not ours. We just put, uh, we just provide our own additional input and and advice to the AA. The AA being the contract party. Whether they would accept our advice or not is for, for them to decide. So there's no question uh, that is, if there should be any dispute, uh, that the AA will have any disagreement. Eventually, it will still be the responsibility of the AA. So in other words, uh, regarding the, the, the responsibility of preventing claims and uh, disputes, the consultant will only give you know, advice to the AA. The AA can choose, can choose uh, whether or not to listen. I believe both parties will you know, consider those uh, views in a professional manner. But eventually, this would be the decision of the AA. Otherwise, there will be confusion. I believe, but in fact, all along, they have been working with us in a rational and professional manner. Holden Chow, your second round. Thank you. Chairman, I've just heard Mr. A. Chan referring to the question of the drafting of contracts. I also may have some uh, suggestions here. In the past, a colleague uh, have also been very concerned about the drafting of contracts and the resolution of disputes. For mega contracts like this, when you have cost overruns, uh, of course, the reason for the cost overrun may be due to unforeseen factors. That's possible. And when you have such cost overruns, I think in the past we have discussed in this panel and other panels as to, that is, for the contractors responsible for such works. When you try to resolve the disputes uh, uh, with these contractors and to, to identify who should be responsible, we're given the impression that the government or the authorities have not tried their level best to, that is, if the contractors have been at fault. They have not been very diligent in holding them responsible. And in the end, actually, uh, the cost will be borne by the taxpayers. This time, of course, the AA is saying that the, we, we're talking about the project cost of $140 million, billion, and the AA will pay for the whole project itself. And this would already give us the impression that no public funds would be involved. But still, we all know that eventually there could be expenses like, you know, costs for airfares and so on will have to be paid by the taxpayers. So my question is about, I'd like to follow up on the question regarding the, the drafting of contracts. You say you will give your, your advice or inputs to AA, and the AA will then listen to your advice or take on board your advice when they draft the contracts. So my question is that in the past, when you dealt with all the all the, the many disputes, have you ever assessed whether in the past you have successfully, you know, go after the contractors and and hold them responsible? Could you give me some examples? Or according to your past experience, could you tell us? Could you give us examples that you have been successfully actually, you know, hold the contractor responsible and make him, you know, pay part of the, the cost? Chairman, Madam Chair, I believe there have been such examples. If Mr. Chow would like to know, I think it's more appropriate that I provide him with a written reply after the meeting. Over the years, we have had so many public works projects, and we've come across many such claims. Sometimes we may need to go after the contractor for uh, we may need to claim against the contractor, and sometimes they will claim against us. Uh, they may claim 
X amount and we offer Y and eventually we would settle because the contractor would also have a certain responsibility. So we have had such examples uh, before and I'll be happy to provide them after the meeting. Regarding the third runway system, the 8A in accordance with the ordinance has to adopt prudent commercial principles to operate the third runway. 8A is bound by the ordinance uh, to do that. So for the third runway project and all commercial disputes arising from the third runway project. So I therefore am confident that the A will seriously deal with each and every claim. Any further follow-up, Mr. Chow, Chairman? Of course, the, uh, Mr. Permanent Secretary, if you give me a written reply after the meeting. Now, honestly, many members of the public may not know. Say, in the past, when you had cost overruns, people would people's first reaction would be why you have not apportioned the responsibility properly. If the contractor was at fault, shouldn't they be responsible? I ask this question because, uh, of course, you can give us a written reply afterwards, and, but I think you should also let the public know that you've done your best to claim against the, the, the contractors at fault. Many people have the impression that you've not done your best to 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 claim the contractors for for what they ought to be responsible for, that's my main concern. I uh, hope you give me some examples in writing. All right, the Prime Secretary, give you a reply in writing, Mr. Tony Chair. Thank you. Uh, we all were with discussing the many responsibilities of the AEPCO and according to the paper there are six major areas of responsibilities. So other than the proposed creation of three directed posts, uh, there are 11 other non-directed posts to be created. And amongst them, most of them are engineers. And the chair had mentioned that there are more than 30,000 plans involving the Buildings Department and the ASD. And the airport itself has its own consultants. So for these plans, now first of all, you need the support of other departments. So say if the buildings department would need to approve certain plans, does the ASD also help? So I'd like to know, you know, uh, what the division of labor is and whether there's any duplication. So that's my first question. I'd like to know how other departments were, were uh, what roles the other departments play. And secondly, Madam Chair, you would probably know that when the Buildings Department looks at the plans, they provide for an appeal mechanism. Now regarding the airport project, now you can designate certain professionals to help and it could be, let's say, if the airport and the AEPCO and the government have, uh, have a different the difference of opinion is AEPCO going to coordinate? So the professionals may have a, a different, you know, views. Now I'll, I'll first of all explain what our principle is, and Mr. Ng will supplement further. For any government department, if it has a statutory duty to make decision in respect of the third runway project. The building department, for example, is in charge of responsible plans. The UPD is responsible for the envir for environmental mitigation. I think these authorities have, will have the authority to make the final decision. And we cannot replace what they do. So that is very clear. So there's no confusion there. And I'll ask Mr. Ng to answer the, 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 the rest of Mr. Chair's question. 
to answer Mr. Chair's question, in the whole process, our vetting and monitoring consultant and our colleagues who are familiar with the building's ordinance will look at the plan submitted by the AAA to see whether there are any flaws, and then we inform them uh, if so, and to, so that they will make amendments before they officially submit them to the to the BUD for approval. So we give them independent advice uh, uh, in the form of independent, you know, uh, you know, vetting. Uh, during the formal vetting, we, we, so that way we can ensure that the building department can vet those plans more smoothly. But there's no impact as far as the appeal mechanism is concerned. The final decision rests with the building department. Our consultant will only provide advice as to how they can improve on the quality of the plans so that the building department can approve those plans more uh, expeditiously. Eddie Chu. Thank you. In paragraph 4, we told that one of the functions of EEPCO is to uh, monitor the, uh, the, the, the budget and that there is the uh, objective to lower the cost of the construction cost for the uh, runway and we refer to paragraph 19. And the target here is that the $180 billion uh, <coughs> target could be reduced. Uh, in which case, uh, uh, AA's estimate is that there will be some $16 billion less in net revenue. So does that mean that the amount that we're going to receive will be $26 billion minus 1.6, uh, $26 billion minus $16 billion? So, so it's uh, 690 and then that will increase to 850 I'll ask Mr. Lau to answer the question, but I think we all should remember that because of views from members of the public that the airport construction fee should be reduced. And that's why the AA, without encouragement, uh, uh, adjusted the ACF accordingly. And as a result of that, the uh, the amount they need to borrow and the percentage would also need to be adjusted upwards accordingly. Ms. Lau will give you the details. Thank you. The Permanent Secretary more or less explained already that is the, uh, the, AC, the part of the ACF which is foregone uh, will, will be reflected by the, in the increase in the, in, the, in the borrowing. So there are three major areas. First of all, the surplus retained by the AA is $47 billion. ACF Total re uh, revenue, 26 billion. That's after the adjustment. 26 billion. So it's 26 billion. Borrowing will go up to 69 billion. Understood. So for the 47 billion dollar, which comes out of your operational surplus, could you let the public know this? That is since. Uh, 2015 when you announced this project, uh, by now, how, how much of the uh, dividend or the surplus that we have already foregone out of the $47 billion? Well, if the AA choose not to pay dividends to the government, then we cannot treat that as a loss for the government because the dividend payout depends on the operational performance of the organization concern. Let's, let us it put it this way. We now have the impression that if we don't pay dividends, uh, it, would, it seems that that, that's, that entry is lost. So my question then is when will you be able to, you know, catch up uh, with the $47 billion? Do you understand what I'm saying? I I think Mr. G, uh, let's talk about 2015-2016. Mr. G may be asking uh, this, that is, how much was the operational surplus of the AA for those two years, Permanent Secretary? Actually, your operational surplus, part of that was, you know, 
uh, pay back to the government. If we're going to for forego this, uh, they will then accumulate to make up the 47 billion. And you're not just telling us how much the AA's operational surplus is, but rather, now I mean, previously you paid the government so much, now that you are not paying that anymore, so how can you make up for that 47 billion? That's what I want to know. Without that process, uh, uh, this could become open-ended. A bit, let's say you you can say uh, you only intended to pay uh, uh, you know 100 million dollars to the government every year. Then it will only take 470 years before uh, you can get back the 47 billion. So how do you arrive at that? I'll try and then Mr. Lau can supplement. I think we're talking about two separate concepts here. Here we're talking about the operational surplus. The $47 billion is the operational surplus of the AA uh, in the last few years. The operation, operating surplus and how much dividend it pays the government are two separate concepts. For members' reference, I think a more realistic way to answer the question is to provide members the figures for the last two or three years, that is how much the AA's operational surplus were. Now, so according to Mr. G, I think how much are you able to save since they've used $47 billion? Does it mean that after they've saved up $47 billion, they will resume the payment of dividend to the government? Chair, Madam Chair, these are two separate concepts. Well, surplus or surplus. Why didn't you let the Permanent Secretary answer the question? I don't have anything else to add. After the meeting, I will um, provide the relevant information to members in writing. Permanent Secretary, I also have a simple follow-up regarding uh, financing. The public is asking, is saying that $160 ACF is too expensive. Can you reduce it? If uh, it's reduced, then the AA will have to take out a bigger loan. There's a way that would allow you not to uh, reduce uh, the ACF, and at the same time, you don't uh, increase the loan amount. We have the air passenger departure tax. Uh, what is it now? What is the amount now? Uh, more than a hundred dollars is in a double digit, uh, a few tens of thousand uh, dollars. But the government can reduce uh, the revenue from the uh, airport passenger tax, and uh, that would uh, be good enough. That's the air passenger departure tax. Uh, it's under the purview of the FSTB. I will pass on your uh, comment to the bureau. And I know the uh, the amount uh, did increase and decrease and increase in the past. Uh, we have a a, a pub, public treasury to flutter with money. Uh, Ask the FSTB to reduce the air pass passenger departure tax. I uh, would uh, reflect your views to the bureau, Mr. Wu Chi Wai. We have to be very careful about financing. Uh, if you uh, adopt uh, something that is that would involve uh, circumventing this council, it can be controversial. I have a question about this uh, AO staff base C uh, duties uh, in t paragraph 26. It has to uh, coordinate inputs to the LegCo in relation to the um, manpower and. Uh, Collaboration, uh, collaboration of departments. When the three uh, S project is uh, being implemented, then you need uh, manpower of different kinds. For example, in the second batch, uh, you need to apply for some uh, equipment to be. Uh, in, to be implemented, to be installed. Uh, I just don't think that you can use this general term coordination and covers everything. 
Yeah, there's a question mark as to whether the the the, the duties are really needed to be discharged. So please tell us what coordination is required on the part of this uh, officer. At different uh, stages, you may need uh, different uh, kinds of manpower. You may need training. You need to apply for funding to build uh, certain hardware. Can you tell us uh, that this uh, officer will also be responsible for the coordination of these matters? Some members mentioned that the uh, light rail system uh, might be needed to extend the system to the uh, to Tongchung. And at present, uh, the uh, bus service for the uh, uh, airport uh, island has only one uh, uh, alignment direction and that is uh, a clockwise route. Perhaps uh, you should consider the, the providing routes in the reverse direction so that I don't have to take a detour if I want to go f for one direction and the surface is in the other direction. So that we, uh, people would have uh, uh, more choices. Uh, actually, it's okay to provide a, a bus route uh, with a um, of an alignment uh, in in the opposite direction. Let me briefly give an account of this uh, AO staff grade C post and the duties, uh, which you can find uh, the details in the uh, paper. But Mr. Wu wants to have uh, further details. Uh, if by the by the time we reach 2023, 2024, we are more than happy to do this in writing after the meeting. With the uh, launching and uh, and the progress made of the three hours project, and then with the uh, completion construction of the uh, runway. There will be a lot of uh, so-called coordination work. Apart from, what, apart from what we have already set out here, two major duties would include that by 2022, when the new runway, runway is uh, commissioned, uh, the original north uh, runway will be closed. There will be the need to coordinate the switch from one to another. Commissioning a new the runway is uh, more or less like uh, commissioning a new airport with one single runway. By the time 2023, the new uh, runway will be operational. That will be a big challenge, not just engineer engineering, uh, in not not only in terms of engineering. But in terms of uh, other coordination work, and this officer will be responsible for all these uh, duties, and of course, uh, the officer is responsible for environmental protection work, including the uh, the implementation of the uh, marine park project. Uh, we can certainly uh, provide a, a written reply to the question in due course. And the transport department is uh, looking at uh, transport service, including bus service, which would would be uh, carried out whether or not we have the third runway. The transport department is uh, looking uh, at the possibility of more uh, long franchise bus services together with the AA. There will be new uh, measures. Uh, so, but uh, instead of uh, having a Starting a discussion here, maybe we can uh, provide the uh, in information required in writing. Uh, Mr. Ngao Lok Hin, I want to, want to know whether certain matters are related to the creation of uh, these posts. 
Some members previously asked about the new latest development of the commercial area in uh, in the north. It said that uh, the ten tender exercise uh, was closed in uh, early 2018, and the and the tenders are being assessed by the AA. Uh, would this uh, be a part of the duties of these officers? Uh, Madam Chair, we're talking about the Sky City. It's a, another project of the AA uh, on the uh, airport island. It's a separate project. It's not related to these uh, three uh, posts that we're talking about. But if uh, you uh, allowed I would uh, ask Mr. Lau to briefly respond to the question. Well, the, the tender has been won by a local developer. Uh, a center. What's the size? 3.5 uh, million square meters. Of uh, faci of facility facility, I will provide the information to the uh, member after the meeting for reference. The uh, economic uh, development uh, panel was brief about uh, the procurement. Of uh, eight billion dollars of equipment for the uh, airport, but uh, no detail was provided on what kind of uh, equipment uh, was involved. Is there a second round of uh, equipment procurement by the AA? And if so, will these uh, three uh, posts uh, be involved? In the procurement, and what kind of equipment uh, will be uh, procured, uh, Mr. Lau? Uh, for the first uh, group of uh, equipment, of equipment, well, the THP uh, provided some information uh, yesterday. First, the civil aviation departments and the radar and control tower <laughs> equipment. And also, there's some equipment to be used by the fire service uh, stations there. And the third group is the uh, monitoring the equipment and devices used by the observatory. Altogether, they would the cost will come to eight point one billion dollars plus. Uh, the relevant information was provided to the panel yesterday. I think. Uh, Mr. Jeremy Tan for giving me the supplementary information. We have a list of uh, equipment to be procured for the first group, but not for the second group. So what are the what are they? What do you the second group? We're still uh, doing the coordination. But simply put, with more people using the uh, airport, uh, with uh, cargo throughput increase, uh, we need to in, in, improve our facilities uh, for customs and uh, and also for the police police work. So it's a uh, customs and uh, immigration facilities. Uh, do you have any details uh, now? Uh, no, uh, uh, we would uh, provide the information later as quickly as we can. Third round, Mr. Chu Hoi Tik. I want to make a. I want to confirm a couple of points here. Uh, the, the administration uh, has promised to, to provide information on the uh, profits made by the AA in the past couple of years. So if I add all those uh, figures of profits and uh, anything in, ex in excess of uh, $47 billion uh, would be dividends that can be distributed to the government. And also, would the announce, would the 2035 framework be announced before the offer of the bonds by 
uh, HFC, HSBC to the public. As I've explained to Mr. Chi and other members uh, in responding to the second question, the 2035 framework. I know it's not uh, related. There are two separate issues. But do you have uh, some uh, uh, estimation as to which would come first, 2035, and uh, and for to be followed by the bond issuance, or uh, we're going to announce the 2035? Uh, uh, framework within this year. I think, uh, given these current circumstances, it will be announced in the latter half of this year. And uh, is it that uh, anything in ex uh, in excess of uh, forty-seven billion dollars uh, will be distributed? Well, we have to respect the AA as a, a legal entity. Whether a dividend is uh, distributed is a decision for the AA. I cannot speculate what the AA uh, will be doing at a certain point in time that a dividend will be distributed. Well, this is alarming. Why did did they say they can uh, avoid coming to this council? Is that uh, the government would uh, forego uh, uh, billions of dollars every year? In dividend, and now you're saying that the AA can decide whether the dividend will be distributed. I think you, what you cannot decide is the exact amount. Why well, he's saying that even uh, if they have a profit of more than forty-seven billion dollars, uh, the AA can still decide not to give a that dividend. Uh, Mr. Chi is asking whether once the forty-seven billion dollars uh, mark is reached, they would start to distribute. Uh, they will give a dividend right away. I cannot answer the question on behalf of the AA. In the past, uh, when there was a profit, uh, the, the AA did uh, give the government a dividend. That's a, a fact. Mr. Jeremy Tam, I want to ask a question about uh, the figure $41.1 billion in uh, enclosure 3. I did ask you a question in writing previously. And about what the what is involved, uh, your response is that uh, you don't want to do that because it would be a sense sensitive. It would uh, it would uh, tip off uh, certain contractors that they are doing you uh, a favor. They are they are being. Um, they are they are not giving the. Getting the best from their contracts. I know the current uh, sum is forty-one point one billion dollars. But can you give us the uh, overall uh, contract sum, Mr. Tam? Well, I I I know your concern. I I read the, your letter yesterday. I would uh, talk to the AA to see how best we we can. Satisfy members' uh, wish to know the answer, and at the same time, we uh, do not affect the management of the contracts. Mr. Tam, uh, you are right in saying that uh, the biggest concern is that uh, on the one hand we want to uh, satisfy your right to know, so that you can uh, f come f f discharge your duties. And but on the other hand, we have to make sure that the information so given will not be used by contractors in the future for making claims and other things. We we'll try to get the balance right with the uh, ace with uh, members after the meeting. Well, uh, they they the contractors uh, may may feel that they are ripped off or they are. Uh, uh, they are at a disadvantage. I understand that, but I want to know the uh, the actual total sum, because uh, we have so many uh, cases of uh, of budget overrun. 
and for this uh, free RS project, the government is saying that there's no the uh, budget overrun and uh, not even a, by a dollar. I hope that this can be maintained in future projects. I don't know how you manage to do this, and uh, if appropriate, maybe other departments uh, can um, learn from this project. And as legislators, uh, we have to know uh, whether uh, by how much uh, the budget is uh, reduced and uh, how cost controlled uh, is actually uh, successful. We have heard uh, Mr. Tam. We'll see how best we can satisfy the Mr. Tam uh, after this meeting. Uh, Mr. Ao Lok In, fifth round. I have a few short questions. First, financing. The consultant is of the view that there's no need to provide any guarantee. Is the position of the consultant the same as the government's position? What's the government's uh, st stance with regard to the uh, offering of a guarantee? There's a list of uh, matters requiring uh, follow up the uh, data the fifth of February. You said uh, you have you asked the AA to monitor, to manage financial risks in uh, issuing bond. When you offer bonds, uh, you you have to uh, ensure that there are sufficient uh, people who are willing to buy them. Have you assessed the situation? Are you confident that you are going to have um, many uh, willing to, uh, holders or willing purchases? I will defer to Mr. Lau. Thank you, Madam Chair. Maybe I can uh, provide simple response to Mr. Lau like this. The AA enjoys a very good standing in the low market, according to the AA. Uh, in the market. There is a keen demand for uh, bonds and other the financial the products that would give a, a stable the returns. Uh, they believe the response will be very good. What about the guarantee I mentioned? We have been very clear that the AA, the 140 billion arrangement will be Born by the AA since the past, all up to the future, we had no intention to uh, guarantee the AA project. Next, Mr. Eddie G. Well, the GY is not present as well. Anybody else? Both questions? If not, uh, then we'll put the item to the vote. Uh, those in favor, please raise your hands. All in favor? No objection? We would like uh, to have a division. We don't need a uh, bell. Those in favor, please raise your hand. Oh, you have to ring the bell. Okay, we'll ring the bell.
We need to vote on the third runway, uh, creation of three posts. Okay, please vote. I'll now, before I announce the results, please check your vote and we'll now stop voting and display results. We have 23 in attendance, 16 for, 6 against, and uh, we endorse uh, the vote. Do we need uh, separate voting in the FC? Okay, we now move on to agenda item number 2. That is the Government Secretariat, Offices of the Chief Secretary for Administration and the Financial Secretary. The suggestion is that uh, we recommend the creation of two supernumerary directed posts in the Chief Secretary for Administration's private office with effect. Uh, from 2022, uh, one administrative officer, grade B, one administrative officer, grade C. It will take approval from the date of approval by the Finance Committee until 30th of June 2022. Uh, we need to uh, uh, support uh, the work of the Human Resources Planning and Poverty Co Coordination Unit. Uh, we had a meeting on the 16th of January in uh, Human Resources uh, Panel and uh, we have in attendance uh, Ms. Kwan, Ms. Mo, and from the Labor Welfare Department, Mr. Fung, and Mr. Kurt Weik, uh, is, uh, uh the chairman of the uh, Human Resources Panel. So I'll have you uh, read out uh, your report. Well, on the 16th of January uh, 2018, we had a uh, discussion in the uh, panel. The majority of members uh, of the panel support uh, the human resource, human resource panel, the aging uh, poverty uh, coordination unit, and some members were dissatisfied with the poverty alleviation work of the government. They expressed the view that if the government uh, have a non means tested uh, retirement plan, and if that stance is not going to change, they would not support uh, the creation of these two supernumerary posts. Now, the panel have voted on the issue, and the majority of them support the, the submission of this to the estab establishment uh, subcommittee for voting. So, any questions from members? Mr. Holden Chow, first round. Thank you, Chairman. Well, uh, regarding the human resources planning, of course I support that. 
but I'd like to take the opportunity to ask, uh, according to our uh, the paper, we have two areas. Uh, we have the uh, human resources planning and poverty coordination. Well, the whole world is facing an aging uh, problem. So aside from aging population, our future work arrangements are actually changing with the development of technology. So we should say that a lot of uh, jobs will change. Uh, and I'd like to take this opportunity to ask, in light of future development, we see a lot of labor-intensive jobs will diminish as technology improves. Uh, we won't need humans in a lot of jobs. So this unit, uh, can they manage this change? And uh, do you have any studies uh, uh, in this area? So that's my first question, Ms. Kwan. Thank you, Mr. Chow, for your question. Uh, Mr. Chow uh, has referred to the aging population and uh, the change of the job nature. So the government is monitoring the demographics uh, and is looking at the age distribution. We are aware of these uh, developments. So this term of government and even in the last term of government we had conducted a very comprehensive policy. We had some 50 plus items. So regarding aging, how do we uh, how do we improve training? How do we release uh, labor? How do we attract talent? And jobs that consistently cannot be filled, uh, how do we fine-tune? We do have uh, a report issued in 2015 and we have some 50 plus uh, measures that are being implemented. Uh, so in this term of government, uh, the CE in the policy address had uh, said that we do need to support uh, the economy. So under the Chief Secretary, we now have a Human Resources Planning and Poverty Coordination Unit, which started work in April. So we had taken note of uh, changes in the dem demographics, the job types, and we have presented our findings. So one of our findings uh, that we uh, presented um, in the past, we just looked at aging and the uh, demographics. So we would like to come up with a policy, but uh, that is targeted at economic development. So in the future, our unit can support uh, our uh, committee uh, regarding um, the um, human resources training, how do we uh, support uh, the uh, economy. So for example, first of all, we need to look at the different types of jobs, the different industries, uh, how do job skill sets change. Of course we have some data, uh, it's uh, at a macro level. So through our unit and uh, we do some numerical analysis and we uh, want to focus on specific job types and look at uh, the uh, some analysis. So, so with this detailed data, uh, we can conduct better training for our young, for our youth. Uh, and for the existing labor force, we want them to be able to meet the changing market environment and for different industries. We have to see in the short term the training, is it sufficient? Uh, do we need uh, outside um, assistance? Do we need to uh, have uh, importation of labor and so on. So we need to have a grasp of the data. That would be my response. Next, Mr. Kwok Wai Kang. I will support 
this item of course we see in the last few years uh, we've done a lot of work to alleviate poverty so we have accumulated some experience so uh, even new colleagues will get a good grasp of the situation but regarding human resources planning I'm very worried because uh, over the weekend I was invited to Jiangmen to inspect the Greater Bay Area uh, I was invited to inspect the infrastructure there and we see the planned economy across the border is uh, they're doing a very good job and they have an accurate as, uh, estimate of the labor force but for the free economy in Hong Kong our planning is we're not as experienced as our counterparts and since we lack a focus I am worried that the human resources planning assessment or estimate will not be as good as expected and the public cannot get the correct message uh, for example uh, if you emphasize certain areas they will take courses in those areas but in the non subvented courses uh, it is in response to the clients preferences or the customers preferences you have not um, conducted uh, analysis of future of the future and recently uh, in our talent list the there is a bias but uh, it's a bias towards the importation of labor so how can you instill confidence that the human resource planning will have uh, sufficient emphasis on nurturing local talent rather than importing talent Thank you, Kwok Wai Kang, for the question. You are correct. Uh, globally, there is a strong competition, for example, within mainland or even the region or even across the globe. And Hong Kong cannot fall behind. If everybody else is ahead of the game, uh, we cannot catch up uh, so as I said we're not a planned economy we cannot uh, implement uh, developments one way or the other but we need a we need a good grasp of the information and analysis so we have economic consultants and uh, statisticians working with us so we can support our human resource planning unit in specific industries so once we have that data it can uh, provide a macro view uh, uh, and we hope that, uh, as Mr. Kwok Wai Kang said, that how can we convey the message to the young and help them choose careers, or even in training, how can they make a better choice? In paragraph 11 of our paper, we say that we want to integrate all this data, and we can start from training, economic motivation, we want to consolidate this information and create a information platform allowing our students, our young adults who are about to join the labor force, the people in the labor force, women and even elderly workers, uh, they can get access to the labor, uh, they can have access to information about the labor market and Hong Kong does have a lot of information but it's dispersed across different institutes or enterprises so we want to consolidate this information but it will take time uh, because it turns out it is quite complex regarding the talent list you are correct the uh, labor welfare department have a recommendation uh, and previously we had 
made a speech at the panel. Uh, the whole world is competing for talent, and we need to be more aggressive. And uh, talent list is the first step. But we not we're not just focusing on importation of labor uh, because our list doesn't cover everything. We see in the short we can only identify um, shortages in the short term. <coughs> so we will have to focus on local uh, development. We cannot rely on importation. My turn. In your document and reply, it seems that your planning is based on local t uh, res human resource needs. Uh, you have labor shortages in certain areas and there's an aging population. But Mr. Holden Chow asked a good question. You have to focus on the technology. You cannot just uh, look at shortages in, uh, let's say, in medical sector. Let's we uh, the uh, MA Mon Monetary Authority is uh, promoting fintech. Uh, we have data analysis or virtual banking. Uh, we will have less retail banks. Uh, for example, uh, auto autonomous driving, uh, autonomous driving technology. Uh, the MTR does not need a human driver. They can just have a person uh, f to have the passengers more. Uh, uh, assured, and even a correctional services department, they have <coughs> difficulty retaining uh, staff. Because uh, you're not allowed to play with your cell phones in the institutions, and and for example, young people are not even allowed, you know, to play, <coughs> you know, with their cell phones on trains. So technology is developing rapidly. Could you therefore be more macro and more, you know, forward looking? So, uh, for example, you have the policy of, you know, having one social worker per school, but as a result, you are affecting the SGP as well. So you need to be more, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, focus on the macro perspective, because all these future developments will have an impact on the labor market. We certainly would also like to do that uh, when we approach the different stakeholders. They came back with a similar view. Technology is changing fast. For uh, any, a cycle of innovation, I think, for example, the people that we have trained nowadays, by the time they are trained, we don't know whether the job will be available uh, then. So when we collect data, we will not be focusing on what we have uh, available now, but we also would be bringing forward looking. We need to be in tune with the, with the, 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 the changing trends. We would also explore you know, the use of big data, which the government had not used that much in the past, so that we'll be able have to, 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 to really have a clear picture. I think there are studies saying that there's going to be the fourth industrial revolution. So which are the jobs which will be eliminated and which are the jobs which will be <clears throat> coming on stream, like, you know, clinical psychologists and so on and counselors and so on. Perhaps you can also come up with a, with a, with a checklist like that for us. So I'll lock in. Thank you. Based on several grounds, it's difficult for me to support the, the creation of this post. First of all, from the public administration perspective, or also the relationship between the administration, the legislature, and the judiciary, there is now a trend. Uh, but uh, but Mrs. Kerry Lamb again is you know you know adopting this so-called committee-style politics. Uh, now, we now have a, a poverty commission, we now have the Human Resources Planning Commission, and then the, the, these commissions are asked to work out the policies. But in the formulation of policies and to build up a social co consensus, this should be the task of LegCo. That is, all members of this council represent different sectors of society. We should all, you know, c discuss and come up with a policy. But under the present arrangement, the committees seems to be above LegCo. Uh, for example, when we talk about the so-called reinstatement order, we had a similar dispute. So I'm worried that this committee-style politics is actually, uh, you know, 
a means by which the government can launch policies it wants to launch. Uh, for example, uh, when one talk about you know poverty uh, alleviation, we should talk about universal retirement. But you are proposing to this uh, great dispose, but you may not really be able to you know eliminate poverty. Uh, you asked Nel Professor Nelson Chow, for example, to look at the subject of universal retirement, and then Mrs. Lam subsequently said that his findings were not practical and lacking in, and he was lacking in the the, 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 the required academic attitude. So the government already has a pre-established position. So I don't expect any good answers from you, but in the in the area of poverty. Uh, alleviation. I think uh, there have been discussions regarding, uh, you know, uh, you know, providing housing units as a means of poverty alleviation. But are you going to really discuss universal retirement and also the study into public annuity? Are you going to do that? Professor Nelson Chow recently uh, also suggested that for the uh, old age allowance uh, is actually you know you know you know uh, a fake version of universal retirement that is old age living allowance so in the end you still pay everybody $3000 and there's a means test and people won't be grateful but this is what Nelson Chow said in his article but anyway the government tell us whether you have already have a pre-established position position. And under the subject of poverty alleviation, will you still be talking about public annuity or universal retirement protection? Thank you, Mr. Hao. I think, well, I don't agree that the committees have a pre-established position and whatever we do, whatever do these things, we already have our own uh, position. The Poverty Commission in the past have always emphasized that all for all the members other than four observers they the the rest of the members come from different sectors of course we always have, we we all we listen to the views of different stakeholders in the poverty commission uh, we have matters which and policies under discussion and in the process we do take on board the views one example is the setting of the poverty line. We discussed that for a long time and the Commission was not able to arrive at a consensus as to how we can reflect the impact of public housing. Uh, and we respected the member with a dissenting view, that is the housing, public housing impact, how that is reflected on the calculation of the poverty line. And the final outcome was that we did not incorporate the public housing into that poverty line. There are uh, members from other sectors also accepted that. So this is our, our approach when we, you know, you know, uh, implement the poverty line. So we're not trying to, you know, supersede or uh, override the let's go with these uh, committees. In fact, many of our proposals have to have the endorsement of let go. Mr. Ray Chen, thank you. The Human Resources Planning Commission. His first task is to provide the CS with support when uh, you know uh, uh, implementing human resources and population policy. So my question, first of all, is whether we have a population policy in Hong Kong, and who is the person or department responsible for our population policy? When C when Carrie Lam was a CS, he set up this uh, you know population policy steering committee. He also reported to the House Committee about his policy regarding population policy and measures. But since then, uh, the matter has been forgotten. That report, according to to well, the, the, that that po population policy boils down to labor importation. So. The population policy that we're talking about, what exactly is it? When I check online, I found that we have the HK population.gov.hk. Which department is responsible for our for this uh, uh, website? 
and it has now become like a news, uh, you know, uh, uh, website where you. So for this post or now within the establishment of the SAR government is population. Do we have a person in charge of population policy? Thank you, Mr. Chan. Mr. Chen asked what exactly is our publishing in policy. In paragraph 13 of our paper, we have roughly explained that, and that is the the publishing policy steering committee of the previous administration had many rounds of discussion, and there was also a public engagement exercise, uh, and they collected lots of submissions. And in 2015, in, 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 we know all that already. So you ask what our population policy is. Uh, there is a brief explanation in paragraph 13. So the 60 odd measures which are announced are now being implemented. So this coordination office under the CS is monitoring the implementation of all these um, measures. So we're still playing a coordinating role. You ask about the website on publishing policy. That is also the responsibility of our, our committee. And the information on the website is also updated regularly. Of course, there are new information regarding our publishing policy and relevant government announcements. And in 2016, we had the by census, and, uh, and we obtained some new data from the by census, and we've also displayed those information in a new format on that website. So that format is the responsibility of our office. Madam Chair, we're worried that you talk about this broad population policy, but in the end, I mean, even human resources planning, in the end, just boys, it simply means creating the basis and the data to justify labor importation. So even if uh, a councillor with a uh, background in, in in trade union had a lot of reservations about your publishing policy, so we support creation of this post. Does it mean that it will be the team? Uh, which will be, you know, doing the preparatory work for labor importation. Now, even after we had the 2015 publishing policy, we have not seen any massive labor importation. The subject of labor importation is being dealt with by a sustainable, you know, mechanism. So, when we talk about human resources planning, we need to look at you know, uh, the labor market, how it can be replenished, labor supply can be replenished to help by economic development. But that is not our major purpose. The committee was set up and we had a very detailed work plan in terms of reference. And it's not possible that it will only be working for on labor importation. We will look comprehensively at the human resources requirement uh, to support our economic development. If the business sector would like to import labor. Would they would they give inputs to to to, to you? Well, well, there is an established procedure dealing with that, so we will not be involved. So lot in. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to go back to another basic point, because the creation of this post means that the the incumbent will need to coordinate among different departments. And of course, you will be conducting human resources training to enhance the quality of our human resources in Hong Kong. Of course, it would involve more than one policy bureau, and there has to be a government official, and you need to put in resources into interdepartmental collaboration. Same for poverty alleviation. However, I must reiterate that if the committee is the highest authority, and above the committee, of course, is Mrs. Carrie Lam. But it is not compatible with uh, good governance. 
the ideal you know, governance is that we should all strive at arriving at a consensus. It is obvious that you set up this committee and then you select the people to join this committee. Obviously you have obviously you would have your own agenda. But I hope that even if you are still going to set, to set up this committee and do all that, it shouldn't be that the committee's uh, decision is the best decision. As I said, even the reinstatement order, uh, Ms. Lochi Kwong said that the position of the LAB is the position of the government which means that whatever the committee or has discussed, it will become the position of the government. But uh, the, our society is comprised not just of the committee, there are other people. I don't know whether this scenario may arise, it could be a bit extreme. The committee may discuss certain things, I don't know. And then in the end, uh, it's contrary to the uh, governance philosophy of the government. And because of your agenda, uh, yesterday you asked El Nelson Chow to give you, you, you his input and then uh, tomorrow you say his recommendations are not worth anything. So there are many of your policies where, where you fail to arrive at a consensus. Even talking about, if you talk about population, You, I think you will need to look at the question of the you know, single permit uh, system. Uh, there's no reason why you don't take this up with the Guangdong authorities. Even at the security panel, we've been discussing this and we're told that we don't have such information or that uh, to tackle people who, who involve in fake marriages and so on. So when we discuss human resources and poverty elevation, the same logic applies. I think we really have to ask whether or not you know it is compatible with good governance. Any response from you, Ms. Kwan? I hope I understand Mr. Al correctly, but I'd just like to respond to one of his points. We cannot and we do not intend to do this, and that is that the committee will replace uh, our, you know, the, uh, the mechanism uh, with which we formulate public policies. It's only a consulted body. It's led by the CS. So I, so so that that's my response. Ji Hi, uh, Ray Chen. I like to. <clears throat> expressed two concerns regarding human resources planning in the past. Well, I have the actual experience that is when you try to, you know, you know, uh, cancel one of the licenses of the TV uh, broadcaster. I have many friends who were planning to join the TV industry. Some would say they would start, go to Taiwan to study because there are many programs on TV production. They have TV, cable TVs and pay TV. When they finish with the studies and come back to Hong Kong, uh, the TV industry doesn't appear to be very, very, you know, uh, prosperous. So if we train certain people now and by the time they finish with the training, uh, I mean, I mean, is the industry that they have been trained for uh, really be as prosperous as we anticipated? If you say you are doing human resources planning, you have the responsibility to show young people, you know, uh, what the what the pathway is going to be and where to not uh, you can deliver on what you promise, so that they they won't be let down. Next, on attracting uh, foreign talents, I think it is important uh, to consider whether we have an inclusive and diversified society, and especially the workplace 
uh, the anti-discrimination policy is very important. Uh, CMAB is talk, talks about human rights, equality, and so on, or equal opportunities. But when one talks about human resources planning, we need, if we want to be competitive vis-a-vis -vis the neighboring uh, jurisdictions, uh, then we may need to consider implementing uh, enacting you know, the, 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 the uh, legislation against you know uh, sexual uh, discrimination and so on, sex discrimination, because that can help make Hong Kong a more inclusive society. Of course, there are some legal proceedings going on, whether or not same spouse, same sex spouses are entitled to visa. You know, you know. Uh, 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 are entitled to visas, endorsement, and so on. Of course, you're not a policy, you don't make the policy, but to attract foreign talent coming to Hong Kong and to make us more competitive in that regard, these are the areas which you you could give your input to the government. Is that correct? Mr. Chen asked two questions. First of all, employment for young people and whether we can provide advice or guidance for young people so that they can select uh, what programs they would uh, uh, study. When I answered questions by another member, I've said already that we would like to Uh, you know, collect data about the prospects of different industries, and we can provide such data on that platform. We want to inform young people of uh, various um, possibilities, and we provide the information. Of course, uh, we are not in a position to uh, give any directions. Because of the uh, changes in uh, technology and uh, the economic uh, system, then uh, it's difficult. Uh, things are ch changing all the time. But we will encourage uh, uh, working people to, to upgrade their skills uh, constantly to to cope with new developments. On the question of attracting talent. We have the view that a diversified uh, workplace culture is uh, beneficial. We'll take a global uh, view on how we can uh, improve the conditions uh, to attract uh, talent. Mr. Ju Hoi Tik, first round. Thank you, Madam Chair. Previously, I had some opportunity to exchange views with the CS. So maybe I can uh, repeat what I said here in this meeting. Now we have this problem, uh, Madam Chair. In relation to urban development in Hong Sui Q and an anti north uh, near the Liantang boundary crossing point, some government departments. Propose that in those new towns there will be a 150 to 200,000 jobs available. This gives people a lot of uh, hope because in the past 20 to 30 years, the uh, new towns are just for residential purposes and uh, people have to uh, take trans transport to go to work in the uh, urban area uh, and now there's going to be a drastic change there will be a lot of jobs and uh, the planning department would uh, work on the the vision and on the other hand we have the uh, in Innovation and Technology Bureau responsible for the innovation and the promotion of startups. And if you have the ITP, whether they can deliver as, as planned by the other bureau. And I would say that it's, it may not happen like that. 
the development of industries may not tie in with the development goal of another bureau. So maybe this is a coordination office. This unit can uh, be the coordinator, so that you don't sort of uh, give people some uh, pies in the sky. Uh, so perhaps you can tell people more specifically the kind of jobs that will be available, so that people will know that whether they are uh, these jobs are good for them, whether they're suitable for these jobs. So that's the first question. Uh, 我記得司長有提過這個機場發展,其實就And the CS has said that with the third runway and the two moon to Chuck Lapcock link to the people of West NT, a lot of job opportunities will be available. I expect this unit, meaning you people, would uh, tell us, citing this as an example, uh, how many new jobs will be created arising from the third uh, runway project, and what kind of job that they are, what kind of uh, qualification will be required for people to take those jobs, so people know what you are going, where you are going. Uh, uh, two, there are two questions. Well, actually, that previously Mr. Chi Hoi Tik uh, told uh, the CS uh, his will in this regard. Uh, we've noted his wills. I think Mr. Chi is uh, right in saying that uh, when we uh, do uh, major infrastructure projects, we would uh, also to look at it from the planning perspective, and also there will be projected. Uh, number of uh, jobs to be uh, created. Uh, that's done through some uh, planning formula or some the model uh, pro for the pro projection. And after the infrastructure is uh, ready, whether there will be the same number of uh, jobs or whether the, the jobs are of the those kinds that we expected at the first uh, in the first instance, well, I understand the need uh, for such uh, projections. <coughs> uh, the public, of course, are welcome uh, projected information like like this, but they would like to get uh, more the detail. Uh, figures and data on the number of jobs and how uh, public transport can cope. So there's the need to do more the thematic uh, studies. So in this regard, we hope that um, uh, our unit uh, will be able to conduct uh, more analysis to the assist uh, manpower planning. And the planning on uh, the creation of jobs and uh, how to meet the uh, needs of uh, work the working population. Members, further questions? If not, I put this item to the vote now. Will those in favour please raise your hand? Those against, please raise your hand. Uh, this item is endorsed. I'll take a five minute break now. Uh, do 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 we need to vote on this separately in the financial committee? No. Okay. Let's take a break.